Yo, what's up guys? We finally have access to the closed beta test for the finals. And so in this video, I'm going to give you guys a little settings guide to tell you what is absolutely best for you to use. And then also tell you guys some of my opinions on good key bindings that will help you have an easier time playing the game. So starting off for window mode, you definitely want it on full screen for the resolution. Whatever it already is, is very likely are correct. Most people, it's going to be 1920 by 1080. So unless you have a non-standard monitor, I wouldn't go ahead and mess with this too much. For V-Sync, V-Sync should be disabled for most people. It does add a little bit of input lag if you turn it on. And the only reason to have it on is in case you're having screen tearing, so you're having those lines come across and just bothering you too much. But otherwise, just leave it off for better performance. The NVIDIA Reflex Low Latency option is good to have on. It does have some extra boost in performance if in certain circumstances, so keep that on. Now, for these two settings here, the resolution scaling method and then the quality of that, you're not really going to need to worry about that if you're not using upscaling. If you are using upscaling and you're playing on a lower lower aspect ratio, lower resolution and bumping that up, then go ahead and use the Intel XESS. That is considered the best from what I've seen. And then you can modify the quality to decide how pretty you want it to look versus how much performance you want. But for most people, you don't need to worry about this at all because you're not upscaling. So moving on, the graphics options are really, really, really important. You're definitely going to want to have your field of view up to 110. That way you can see what's going on around you more and just have more information, which is just inherently better. Um, and for motion blur, unless you want to be really sick and also just have a pure competitive disadvantage, keep this off. So 110 and off. For the quality of the visual settings, I have them all set to low except for view distance. You don't really need these to be high if you're looking for more performance in your system as every one you have set higher will just take a little bit of drain on the system. Like, you know, you turn the foliage on, like that's 5% drain, like whatever, right? As it goes up. <clears throat> now, the reason I have view distance set is because as I was messing around with this and I was playing, I was noticing that certain things weren't rendering until I was a little bit closer to them when I had it on low settings. And some of these things I couldn't necessarily shoot through. So that can cause some issues with that. So if you can go ahead and get this a little bit higher, if your PC is a little bit on the, on the higher end, you can go ahead and bump some of these up, but I would start with view distance as one of the more important ones to get the better competitive experience. Um, for the graphics API, just leave this at DirectX 12. There's no reason to change it unless you're having some weird issues with it. So going on to audio, nothing crazy here. You can adjust the subtitle size and text and stuff like that. I really don't, you know, care too much about that. Like it's fine to have them. They can be a little bit distracting. So maybe you want to turn them off, but not that big of a big, not that big of a deal. And of course, you can mess with the volume to decide what works for you. Um, make sure you turn on your voice chat so you can talk to your people in game, guys. <laughs> All right. For gameplay, this is just the matchmaking region. Just leave it automatic unless you're trying to get to a specific region, like you're trying to get to Asia, North America, whatever. Otherwise, automatic. Now, for the controls, there's a couple of settings that are pretty interesting here. After you found yourself your whatever mouse sensitivity works for you, um, you're gonna go ahead and look down at these input settings. For zoom behavior, I keep mine at press just because I think it's better and you have more control over things. But for sprint behavior, there's arguments on both sides for why the other, which one's better. Um, if you keep it on press, that means you don't have to press it again to turn it off. And therefore you don't have to, you know, make sure you're switching between, between it being on and off like you do with toggle and for a lot of people it's more comfortable for me it is but what toggle allows you to do is it allows you to be able to sprint and slide with the same hand so you can use your pinky to press your shift to sprint and then you can use your your left control to hit your your crouch to slide now if you're not going to use that like i'm not going to then you can go ahead and down here and set your second crouch to one of your mouse buttons on your side i have mine you know bound to seven because it's it's a little bit weird but yeah, that'll definitely let you be able to actually move around properly and slide at the same time while having the the spread behavior set to press. <clears throat> For other general settings that I like to use, like I said, a lot of this is preference, but I have kind of min max my settings in some ways. So what I like to use is I like to have my usability set to my middle mouse button. It can be a little bit weird to get rid of, get used to, but it's very useful to have this very consistently and easy to press something that you can reliably use, reliably use, especially if you're playing like one of the heavy characters and you want to, you know, just be able to charge someone whenever they get close to you, which is generally what I'm doing. So middle mouse button on usability if you want to get that advantage. There are um, some other things I've done, like add my melee attack onto my 
onto my mouse buttons, just so I can easy access to that whenever I need to melee people. And the other thing that's important to mess with is the weapon slots. The weapon slot one is your primary weapon. So um, set this whatever you want to be able to quickly swap back reliably and just always get back to your primary weapon. But for these options here, if you went ahead and did use the middle mouse button, you've now freed up one of your, your I think it's E, to be on one of your weapon slots. So you no longer have to have um, it on like one, two, three, and four. So I have mine set to E, Q, and then two for the different abilities. And like I said, since you freed it up with the middle mouse button, if you're using that, it makes one of these even easier to use. So the ones that you're gonna be using the most, you should put on E and Q because they're easiest to press. And then the one that you're using the least should be two, um, if that's, you know, if it's whatever else you're gonna be using, right? Or two or one. So yeah, guys, and uh, you know, if you have colorblind issues, then here's the colorblind settings. But other than that, that's everything. So thanks for guys for watching, I appreciate it. And yeah, peace.